How do you make a book barely over 300 pages so boring? Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I am going to be talking about Daughter of Red Winter by Ed McDonald, which is coming soon. Uh, I received this physical arc, uh, my first ever actually like physical arc from a publisher uh, in return for a review. And I'd, I'd like to tell you that I enjoyed this and this is really good, but unfortunately that is not the case. So we're getting uh, two fairly negative reviews in a week. So sorry, but uh, that's kind of where we are. So in Daughter of Red Winter, we have the, the tagline, those who see the dead soon join them, uh, which is pretty interesting. Uh, and basically uh, setting up the premise that there are some people in this world who can see the dead. And uh, if anybody finds out, basically they put you to death because it's looked at as evil, you know, kind of makes sense. Uh, and then we're, we're set up with, and I, I'm gonna say right now, I, I was calling the character Rain in my head. It's R-A-I-N-E, so it might be like, Renee or something, but I'm gonna say Rain because that's what I said in my head the whole time reading. But, so we have our main character, Rain, who is one of these people who can see the dead. And uh, she is living with like this group who's like, seems half cult uh, kind of thing uh, as uh, they're being sieged uh, by some people who are trying to kill them because somebody in the party was accused of being able to see the dead. Uh, so that kind of set up there and she's looking for a way out and stumbles across uh, a girl who's running for her life and trying to get to the like city or the the area that Rain's party of people are at uh, and she's being chased by the uh, Drowin, which I also may be mispronouncing who are kind of like warrior mages uh, and they come from Red Winter uh, which is a place basically where these warrior mages live and they they go all around and have kind of their own things and they they only kind of answer to themselves for the most part in doing what like their mission is uh with their magic and don't directly report to anyone but they're chasing down uh and that's kind of where this starts out and of course uh and and this part too is is all just right on the back of the book so it's it's nothing major but of course something happens and uh, Rain ends up getting mixed into it and ends up having to go to Red Winter, uh, which you can probably get from the title uh, as it is as well. So it follows a, a fairly, you know, normal kind of thing. There's events happening, main character ends up getting pulled in something beyond their understanding and then kind of goes from there. But the, the biggest issue is, and while there are in-world reasons for it, there is an explanation for why it's the case. Our main character in this story doesn't really have quite a lot of emotion and is just almost like seems to be in a fog for a very large portion of this story. And while it's a choice the author made, it's really one that I think makes this book suffer quite a lot because I don't really care about this main character. I'm not engaged uh, because we don't really get any, any of that like emotion, the things that make you feel for a character. And so it just is a choice that for me really did not work out well. What it actually reminded me of is uh, there, there is a, a part in um, the third Farseer book um, and uh, Assassin's Quest, I should say the name of it. Uh, there's a chunk of that book where we have a character who is, and it, it's handled very differently, but we have a character who's basically kind of like in a fog and not really seeing things. And since it's told from that character's perspective, uh, it makes it kind of odd to read. And a lot of people really didn't like that. And I'm always like, like, yeah, it's kind of weird, but I had no issues with it. Well, this book um, made me realize what that feels like when you don't like the book and you have to read something like that because when Hobb did that in Farseer, it was done when we'd already gotten to know the character for two and a half books. And so it was like, okay, you know, that kind of works, but we're trying to introduce a new character and set up a new series. And I don't think that was the correct choice to make in order to do it effectively, at least. I will say the magic system that's kind of set up here is interesting. Uh, I've already noted that there are some people who can see the dead. Uh, that's explored a bit more. That's not like directly related to the magic system, but uh, the magic system has to do with like kind of going into a trance and with rhythms, like everybody who does magic has their own kind of rhythm to it. And then there are different gates, uh, which are like, you know, like ethereal gates, not like literal gates, 
uh, that you can go to basically, um, which there's um, seven, I think, seven gates, uh, and there's like the level of your magic where you can affect the world around you or affect others or do these kinds of things going up to uh the sixth gate which is death and the seventh gate which is creation and so it's these people like as they they get more powerful they can access these other gates uh and and be able to do more types of things uh so that part i found to be fairly interesting unfortunately i didn't really care for a lot of this book otherwise uh, it felt uh, pretty dry like i said because the main character is not really given a whole lot of emotion or experience to to make you really connect to the main character and a lot of the other like secondary characters felt pretty flat or just kind of felt like they followed stereotypes a lot as well um this also did a thing which it was never completely like you know blatant but it, it did a thing that always annoys me in a book, especially when you're dealing with younger characters, which is just being horny all the time. And for a character who we don't get a whole lot of, we definitely have to hear her lusting after every other person uh, in this book also, which is just not something I'm a big fan of uh, in my book. So I didn't really care for that. But a lot of the other characters just seem very, very stereotypical. Uh, you know, we have the the fat loser no one likes and like the really handsome but secretive and like very formal uh, type of other character and, you know, the girl who's just a bit wild and wanting to do all kinds of stuff. It just, and the further we got in the book, the more it felt like a bad YA. Uh, and including when it got to the, the climax is when we just basically go entirely full YA. There was an incredibly tropey and just kind of like really obvious scene that happened uh that's straight out of like a bad YA you know romance novel or something like that and it just was really dumb and it really irritated me because this is this is a book that's being presented as f adult fiction and I'm not saying that YA is always bad that's why I said the bad YA parts when we're doing the the negative things that make people like me not a huge fan because they're very common in a lot uh, and also just going to tropes and really, really predictable types of plot lines. It just kind of ruined any other chance this book had of pulling me in. There are some parts of the climax that are somewhat interesting, but it's the fact that the way it's set up is also just pretty evident. The, like, big reveal was blatantly obvious to me for at least half the book. Uh, it's something that just like there were very heavy handed hints I felt like and so I don't know if it was still supposed to be a, a, a big reveal or if it was just that the the foreshadowing was done with a bit too much force uh, it was force shadowing ah, there we go I'm gonna coin that term but it just made it so that I'm like yeah I don't really care this isn't surprising it's happening blah 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 and when I don't really care about the characters the plot seems to drag too and the reveals are pretty predictable and we just go into a trope fest it really brought this book down for me very, very quick. Uh, I've said before, when I'm reading a book, I usually start around three stars. That's kind of my baseline. The more I like it, the higher that rating goes. And then if I start liking it less and less, usually the rating gets lower. And this one uh, got about a two and a half stars for me. I didn't care for this. It wasn't terribly written by any means. Like the, the prose is good. Um, there were some good ideas in it, so I didn't hate this book, but uh, this has most certainly uh, showed me that I have no interest in continuing this series, and it's another one too, where because I just did this with the McClellan book, but um, I'd heard mixed things about Blackwing, and I have the first book in that series. I, I like I said, I heard some mixed things. I know a lot of people love it, but um, I'll still try it at some point. But it ain't gonna be anytime soon because when I read the new hyped book by an, a fairly well-known author, and I do not think it's good at all, it just does not really give me a whole lot of hope uh, and desire to up them in my, my TBR, basically. And so this one was pretty disappointing. I'm holding on to the fact that I got this physical arc, uh, which I've never gotten a physical arc directly from a publisher. I ended up getting one kind of secondhand uh, when I joined a buddy read uh, for Nightmare Land, so I do have that. But this was like the first one directly sent to me. So it's super awesome, and I'm sorry, Tor, I love you, but the last two books that you've asked me to review have not been good. So get it together, please. Uh, help your authors get some get some good books out, because I still love you, Tor. Uh, but this, this was just a, a really, really big miss.
for me. Uh, and I, like I said, the, the magic system and some of the, the world building I thought was interesting, but there just was not anything to pull me in. I was not really engaged in this book. It is a pretty short book. I mean, you can see it's pretty short in this copy, and I don't know if the hardcover will be more, but it's uh, including the Dramatis Personae, it's 340 pages. Not very long. I was able to at least burn through pretty quick, but I just at no point was really interested in what was going on. Didn't care about the characters, didn't really care about the plot because I could see a lot of where it was going, and then we just started doing bad YA tropes uh, at the end, and it just it, it did not do it for me. Uh, I'd be really interested to see what other people think about this because I talked to Andrew a lot as I was reading uh, this uh, and we, we both had similar complaints, but I know I've heard others really enjoyed this. I legitimately would like to know why. So if you are watching this after seeing it and you just disagree with everything I've said, please let me know because I always like to have those conversations. I like to know uh, what the things people either interpreted differently, hit people differently, uh, or if it's just, you know, it, sometimes it's just simply a matter of taste as well, but I'm always interested to see differing opinions. So definitely let me know. Um, unfortunately for me, I'm definitely not going to pre-order this book, and I definitely won't read any others in this series, uh, but I'm still just curious. It's something I read. Good or bad, I like to talk about books that I've read, so definitely let me know in the comments. Uh, otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. Check the link in the description for the Wizardly Duo Discord if you want to chat books. Uh, or really anything at all. It is a lot of fun and we would love to have you. Of course, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe. <laughs>